There are six screws holding the cover on the front of the battery and two screws that hold a socket there. And basically I'm just removing that fan which is very loud and the original battery management circuit and pretty much everything from this little compartment at the front of the battery and you can see more about that in the previous video where I go through all the details of making a battery like this as a power wall for my house. So now that I've got everything out of the battery I want to add a fan a quiet fan this works on 12 volts but there will be a 12 volt supply between the two batteries the three in the center of the three batteries it needs a BMS to prevent overcharging or over discharging and the BMS has to have a wire that goes to every cell in the battery and then that plugs into the BMS there. I also want to add a battery monitor. This will show me the voltage of every cell in the battery and again one wire of this will have to go to each cell in the battery. And there's also this board The BMS isn't going to have enough balancing current for a battery like this. The ce each cell of the battery can become higher or lower than the ones around it and when you're charging or getting to the end of the discharge you want them to be all almost the same voltage so you get the most use out of the battery because this BMS is going to cut off the battery as soon as the first cell reaches its maximum or minimum and so and this will try to balance the cells by bleeding power off of the higher voltage cells but its current for balancing the cells is just milliamps. It's on a battery this size, it's nowhere near enough. So this is an active cell balancer. And it will, it has a balance current of five amps. So it will keep each cell in this battery at about the same level of charge. And once again, from this connector here I'll have to have a wire to every cell in the battery and I've got different color coded wires so I can keep track of like which is which and I have a color coding scheme which will hopefully make sense even if I lose the color code key because I'm kind of going from black to red through the spectrum the negative terminal of the battery or ground will have a black wire the next spot in the stack of cells will be gray, white, purple, blue, green, yellow, pink, and finally red at the positive terminal. So that's the plan which brings us to this connector here. Whatever happens I do not want to touch any of these red wires together right when I have them disconnected because that would short between cells and would burn up these wires and the connections and that I really want 
to retain so that I can do my wiring here instead of going inside the battery to every cell. So I'm going to only take one wire at a time and I'm going to start at one end. I want to get my meter I want to set to DC volts. The leads on my meter aren't small enough to go in these holes here. So I found these capacitors that have very thin wires on them. And these can actually fit in here and make contact so that I can make a voltage reading. Being careful not to short. I get 26 volts. Negative 26 volts, right? So that means this is the negative lead. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to bend that over so that I don't accidentally short these. And that would make this the positive lead. Well, right now I get 26 volts. And here, 22, 16.3, 16.3, 13.6, 9.8, 6.5, 3.2, and no connection here. So this is the positive lead, and this one over here is the negative. So these red wires, this first one up at this end has no other one in the row behind. But after that, then they go front, back, front, back, front, back, all the way to the negative way at this end. And I'm going to unwrap some of this wire protector just in order to get more room to work with these wires. So I've taken tape off of these these wire looms and these are split once you get the tape off. That's how they got the wires in there. And I'm just going to take it back away so that I can get good access to my wires. And here, this other wire loom here, same deal. It's got a split. It was wrapped in tape, but now that I'm through that, I have access to these wires. And this wire here, we had decided is the negative terminal for the battery. And that is the first wire to be cut. So here I'm putting the color coded wires in the active balancer. And now with one wire from each of these devices that needs to be connected. I twist those together to make a three-way connection. And I get some heat shrink that's going to protect my connection once I'm through soldering it. And now that wire that I've cut from the battery I can use that tool and strip some insulation off and then I try to make as good of a mechanical connection as I can twisting the wires together and then soldering them. And you want to make sure you know which wire is which. Starting at one end I started at the negative and then making sure that each of the three devices and the battery has the right
corresponding wire. So there were my three plugs all ready to go and I can plug my devices in now. And that's the monitor showing me the voltage of every cell as soon as it was plugged in. And the BMS and the active balancer. And now I just have to find room for these inside that part of the housing that I emptied. This out. wire goes from here and the wind can go back up. And that's it. I seal up the battery and I have two more to do just like it. And this is my monitor. I ran the wires for that outside the case and I'm just sticking it on there with double-sided VHB tape which sticks things real good. And the guys at XL Marine did a great job of getting these batteries in here. And I can't lift them at all. The best I can hope to do is to maybe slide them around in here as I'm working with them to get them where I need to work on them and then now into their final position. There, see? Cool. And here is a view of all three batteries at this point. They've all had the management circuits and they're not connected together so they're at different voltages from each other. But there's my monitor showing the voltage in every cell in that battery. And that one and that one also have their monitors. Now the heavy wires from the BMS, the blue lead gets connected to the battery's negative terminal. And the black lead becomes the new negative terminal of the battery, which is protected and will disconnect if any cell is too high or low of a voltage. And the main big terminals I will connect with water pipe like this. This is half inch water pipe. It's a heavier gauge than most home improvement stores. It's the kind with the red printing on the outside. And in order to connect wires to it better. I'm sort of using the caveman technique and flattening the end of each tube. It's actually a bit harder to flatten this water pipe than I had imagined. But they're done. And now I bend the flattened part over. like that so they don't stick out so far. Oh, this Lana coat is what you coat all your electrical connections and stuff in the boat with so that they don't corrode. And apparently it's required on planes because once you open the container of this it smells like a Cessna. I guess with all the connections coated with this stuff and then the plane sits in the sun the plane starts to smell like this so if you want to smell what a small aircraft smells like you don't even need a plane you just get a jar of this Lanacote electrical protector and surprisingly I was able to hammer these connectors on. They're a very tight fit and I had to deburr the place where it was cut 
but it went on. An alternative is to cut a slice up the side of the pipe and it'll go on real easy and then you use hose clamps to tighten it onto the terminal. And then my BMS connects with a bolt through that hole that I drilled in the flattened part of the pipe. <sighs> and now um, I can bend this over so that it's less likely to be in the way. There's going to be a cover that goes over all of this, so that can be more compact if I can make these connections seem smaller. There was a guy with a channel called David Pose that gave me the idea of the pipes as connections for these. Each battery has a monitor, which we're going to move to this front panel with the breakers. This is the cover for the batteries with the monitors and the breaker for each big battery. This goes along the bottom eventually. At the moment the positive terminal is at the bottom and this is how I'm going to connect to them. It's a piece of water pipe that fits snugly over the battery terminal and I flattened it and made a hole where I can connect my battery cables to it. So that goes down here. And all the positive cables will run to the back of the rear cabin and all the negative cables, this gets glued down eventually. Negative cables are running to the back along this top piece. So then along the back wall, there's fans on the front of the batteries or I would put all of the bus bars and connections here at the front of the batteries. Instead, they have to go on that back wall. And so there's this big panel that goes along the back wall for that. And like the cutoff switch, all the bus bars and connections will go there. And then above that, I've made this part. And these two by twos get screwed into the back wall there and then that back panel screws to the front of these two by twos. And above the panel is this little shelf with this lip. And that's a wiring channel so that wires can go from one side to the other without being in the way or needing to be tied up somehow. They can just lay on this little shelf right here at the very back. So there's the back wall. This is that big panel that the bus bars will connect to. And here's that shelf with the two by twos. So this gets screwed there, shelf up top. 
And then this panel. screws to the two by twos that are in the back wall and because we're limited to 80 amps per battery I can have four gauge cables so they're connected these are the copper water pipe that was pounded over the terminal and a bus bar for the negative side and the positive side with the main cutoff so the positive wires will attach here and then this switch can shut the battery off and my inverters and charge controllers can connect here so the next thing is to make a panel that will fit on this back wall that will be this panel here with these mounted on it and covers like these to cover the bus bars so that nothing can short so the bus bars and the cutoff switch have been connected to this panel and the panels in place now and you can see up above there's this channel for wires that goes all the way along there and all the negatives have been connected now here's the positives the thing is as soon as I connect these three positive wires to get to here to this input to the switch at that point all three batteries are connected in parallel and before I do that I have to make the batteries the same voltage 26.76 this one is 26.65 and this one is 26.67 so very close but I'm gonna to want to try to get them as close to being even as possible <laughs> 